those of you who are joining us online this morning, we welcome you. And others who will join us later, we, will, we are happy that you'll be a part of our service as well. Uh, we continue to uh, battle the effects, uh, the impact of the COVID-19, and uh, obviously uh, it's uh, making a, an impression on us in a lot of different ways. And certainly uh, all churches uh, are struggling with uh, uh, trying to find ways in which to stay connected, trying to... Uh, have fellowship and, and conduct worship and Bible study, and uh, we are having to be innovative, perhaps, to, in ways that we've never been before, and that's not a bad thing, uh, but at the same time, uh, we have people that are not able to be with us today for this reason, and we want to be mindful of that and, and prayerful on, on behalf of them, especially those that are already battling some form of illness. Uh, this would certainly be a, a, a tremendous uh, hardship for them to uh, contract something like COVID-19 as well. So please uh, uh, be mindful of this as you pray for them today. But I'm glad you're able to be here. We welcome you. A couple of announcements to share with you before we enter into our worship this morning. Uh, a reminder that we have started a, a Bible study. We're doing it online. Uh, so if you would like to participate, uh, I've actually had the first uh, study put online. It's a study on, uh, with the book of Jonah. Uh, going to be four studies, one on each chapter. Well, the second study will be coming out this next Wednesday. So you still have time to get involved. It, it, it doesn't matter if you weren't, if you haven't already seen it, just to go uh, to our Facebook. You'll find your way there. Uh, you'll be able to get started in the study, and I think you'll find it uh, not only... Uh, uh, good for you in terms of its information, uh, but it'll be inspirational as well. Uh, we'll see ourselves somewhat in the person of Jonah. We'll see, though more than this, we'll see our God uh, who is sovereign. Uh, and our God has a plan that he wants us to be in on. Uh, he's a God who gives us uh, a second chance, uh, and some of us realize he's given us more than that. He's given us third chances and fourth chances and so forth uh, because he is merciful uh, and he is gracious. God has, wants us to be in on his plan uh, and wants us to know that we have a purpose for being in this world as his children. Uh, it's not for we can, what we can get from this world. And a lot of people live that way, but for us it's what we are able to give back, what we are able to do to make a difference in the world in which we live. So if you have opportunity, please go online and join me in this study of the book of Jonah. Also, a reminder that we will have Vacation Bible School this summer. It'll be done uh, online as well. And now is the time to sign up. Uh, and if you need more information with respect to the Vacation Bible School, you need to uh, contact Jackie Town. She'll be able to uh, let you know what you can expect, uh, what you need, uh, and make sure that you are uh, able to, to be a part of it if that's your desire. And hopefully you will be. Uh, but those are a couple of things that I wanted to bring to your attention today in the way of announcements. Uh, everything else as far as what we are doing remains as it is. Uh, we are not going to be doing anything differently than what we're doing, but we hope to continue to do it safely uh, in a way that will give you a, a sense of confidence uh, and security when you, uh, if you choose to come and be a part of the worship experience here on, on Sunday mornings. Uh, but we do welcome you again. And those who are, are joining us online, thank you for being a part of our service. Let everyone join me now in prayer. Father, as we enter into this time of worship, we do with open hearts, grateful to you. Uh, we come to give praise and to give thanksgiving before you. And I know your people scattered all around are joining with us as one in, in heart, uh, offering praise and thanksgiving before you as well. And uh, we pray that you will be with each and every one here and wherever they might be at this time. And uh, let them know, Father, your presence with them. May they draw close to you, even as you desire to draw close to them. Uh, may we re realize the movement of your Holy Spirit in our lives. May our ears become attentive and, and we listen closely to the songs that are sung, the prayers that are prayed, through the word that is going to be preached. May our hearts be made re receptive to this by way of your Holy Spirit working in us and through us so that we become not only hearers of the word, but as we leave here from this experience together, we become doers of the word as well. Draw us now together with you, Father. Give us your peace, because our minds are set upon you. 
and I'll help us, Lord, to worship you fully with our hearts in every way. Forgive us for anything that we bring with us that we need it not need not have brought in our hearts and our minds. Forgive us, Father. Cleanse us so that our spirits are able to be at one with yours. We'll give you the glory and the praise throughout every moment of this worship experience through Jesus Christ. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. We would love for you to stand and join us as we sing, but stand as long as you feel comfortable. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. 
Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Shame is As we prepare to go to our Lord yet again in prayer, I want to bring a few prayer concerns to your attention. Uh, some of those uh, have been before us for a while, and we are reminded to continue to pray for them as their need for prayer continues. Please uh, remember to hold them up in your prayers. Uh, I do want to reflect upon a couple that are uh, 
that have, have come to my attention in just the, the last uh, few days. One is Nina Strickland. I ask that you be with, in prayer with, with me for her today. Uh, Nina's awaiting some results from a, a biopsy. She should get those results in the next few days. So pl please be praying about, about this for her and, and for Bill as well. And remember little McKenna is up to in prayer because she will be having surgery at Children's Hospital on, on July the 15th. So please continue to be in prayer for her and her family. Uh, we had a, a, among the tragedies that we've had uh, throughout our country uh, yesterday and perhaps other places in the world, one that was brought to my attention close to home happened at the Galleria. Uh, where we had a shooting and several people were injured. I, I know at this one who, uh, it, it, uh, I think it was an eight-year-old whose life was taken uh, as a result of this shooting. So remember uh, these folks in your prayers today and uh, our country that is definitely uh, in need of, uh, of God's touch, it, uh, a country that, that needs his, his hand upon it and needs a healing, it needs a, a spiritual healing uh, as much as anything else. And we, as God's people, are, are the ones who, who help bring this to his, his attention in, in, in our prayers. And he looks to his people to pray on behalf of the country. So please, uh, if not already, join me in prayer for our country uh, as we have much unrest about. Uh, remember those, again, who are working toward uh, an answer to this COVID-19 uh, while progress appears to be uh, uh, coming about, uh, we're still a ways from a, a vaccine that will, will prevent it or a cure, if you will, for it. Uh, so pray for those that are, are working toward this end, uh, that they will gain a greater understanding of, of, of what they are working against and what they are working for, uh, so that they are able to find the solution that we all need so badly. Uh, remember your church in prayer, uh, each and every one who are here and those that are, are not with us in body, but certainly within spirit. Let's pray for one another. Uh, we don't know everything that's going on in everyone's life, but let's try to be mindful that uh, uh, the fact that uh, there are challenges in all of our lives. We know this from our own personal experience. Well, we, none of us are an island to ourselves. There are challenges in others' lives, too, that are connected with us. And while we may not know the details of those challenges, we need to be mindful that they're there nonetheless. We hold each other up in prayer for this reason. Pray for the Vacation Bible School that'll be uh, happening here and in the next several days, uh, and for those that are preparing uh, the uh, Vacation Bible School, and, and for those that will be participating, becoming a, a part of this experience. I pray that God will bless all uh, who participate, that he will receive glory from the experience of it when it's all said and done. Will you join me now as we bow our heads? Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we come before you yet again, uh, once more with grateful hearts, giving praise and thanksgiving as we should, but also recognizing, Lord, our need for you, recognizing that uh, we are a people that, uh, even at our best, we are incomplete. Uh, we fall far short of who we are supposed to be and what we are supposed to be about. Uh, we need forgiveness even as we pray for others who, who need that same forgiveness. We need it for ourselves. Uh, we need to be restored. We need the strength that we uh, don't have within ourselves that can only come from you. If we are going to be the difference that we are meant to be in this world, we need the difference that you and you alone can make in us as well as then through us. Help us to be mindful of our brothers and sisters in Christ everywhere not just those connected with the church here at Rocky Ridge, but those throughout the country and throughout the world. Being mindful that, uh, of the struggles that they may be going through at this present time and, 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 and the difficulties they're having. Uh, it's so easy to, to look upon our, our, ourselves and, and, and realize our limitations and our challenges and our obstacles, but, but there, there are others that have them perhaps many times worse than what we ourselves are experiencing. So let us not forget to pray, Father, for them. Help remind us of this. Call our attention to the particular needs that we should pray for as well. And now thank you for taking care of those within our church family that are struggling right now, that are uh, some of which are, are cut off from us because of what's going on. 
uh, uh, we want them to know that they're loved, that they're missed, and that we care about them. Help us to find ways to convey that, that love and that concern. Uh, but I pray that you will uh, draw them close to your heart today, that uh, they will experience a sense of your presence, even as we sang about this a few moments ago. What a precious thing it is to feel your presence, to, to know your presence in our lives, and, and to be able to rejoice in that. Uh, we pray that you will uh, help us prepare our minds and hearts now for your word, which is to be delivered to us. Uh, I'm the Father, your servant. I, I have nothing of myself that needs to be shared today, but only that which has been inspired of you. I pray that you help me to, to just push aside anything else that would come to mind so that the very words of my mouth would be as if they were the words, your words coming from heaven to your people here on earth. I give myself to you for this purpose, for your glory, and for the good of your people. Help us now, Father, with ears to listen, with hearts to embrace that which you bring to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have your Bible with me, you can turn to the book of Romans. At this particular time, I'll be reading from the 8th chapter of Romans. I'm going to read beginning with verse 18 and I'm going to read down through verse 25 and then I'm going to skip down to verse 31 and read that in 32 and then skip down to the very end of the chapter and read verses 38 and 39. I believe the verses will be up on the screen if, for you to follow along. Here's the reading of God's word for you this morning. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and be brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the very present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. And in verse 31 he says, What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? And then beginning in verse 38, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That is the reading of God's word for you this morning. And yet there is, yet, uh, there is another scripture I want to share with you as well, and I believe y'all are going to be able to put this one up on the screen too. It comes from the Psalms. It comes from the uh, 33rd chapter in verse 22. That's all right. You, you, we, we are patient. That's one of the things we just read about a few moments ago. There it is. We've got to be patient. Now, the reason I wanted this up on the screen before you today, because I want you to read this aloud with me this morning. And, and, and I want you to read it aloud with me this morning, so they're going to think out there, the place must be packed full today at Rocky Ridge Church. So join me in the reading of this passage. It's a beautiful passage. May your unfailing love rest upon us, O Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Now, I couldn't help but notice that eight people out there online and at least three in here did not say that verse aloud with me. And I know you're wondering how I can know this and how I can realize anyone online, is, if, is, if there is anyone online, and everybody here is wearing a mask. And now, so how could I know it? Well, somehow I just know it. So let's do it one more time. 
may your unfailing love rest upon us, O Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Today I want to talk about hope. That's what's on my heart this morning and what I want to share with you. And I do so in, in uh, response to a question. How do you maintain hope in a world that seems hopelessly broken? I mean, have you been watching the news, if nothing else, the news for the last four months? This is the 4th of July weekend, and yet I have never felt it so unpatriotic in our country as I felt at this particular weekend. Not that there weren't people celebrating, but there are a lot of people that are anything but celebrating. There's a lot of unrest, there's a lot of unrestraint and unlawfulness at this time. We're living in a time of uncertainty, and some might even say a time of insanity. If the last four months have taught us anything, it has taught us that, we, that the world in which we live is fragile, isn't it? The world we live in and the times in which we live are fragile times. COVID-19 has crushed the norm, if you will. Unemployment is still high. Marriages and, and families are, are, are being pressed upon to the point of, of near breaking apart. And I could go on and on with the list of things the, that, are, that are resulting from this pandemic that we're experiencing. So how do you manage? Well, I want to talk about hope in light of this. And rather than trying to define hope to you this morning, I, I want to describe it somewhat. And this is not my, it's not original with me. Uh, I have seen it before and I have even seen it more than once before, uh, not knowing exactly from where it originated. But someone has said, and it's been said again and again, that hope is like a, a ladder that we lean against a wall. And I, I want you to think about that description. Hope is like a, a ladder that we lean against the wall, and sometimes we do so not even knowingly. Let me give you some examples of this. When you came into this world, when you and I were born, and uh, we leaned our ladder of hope, even as an infant, we leaned our ladder of hope against those who cared for us, be it our parents or whoever. We leaned our ladder of hope against them, trusting that they would protect us and that they would provide for us, that they would care for us and that they would love us. But as time went on, for some, the ladder has been moved, no, not, no longer leaning so much against one's parents as leaning against uh, maybe one's education or one's career or one's own abilities, if you will, or perhaps leaned against other relationships that became a part of that person's life. But whatever or whoever, you know, we are moving our ladder and leaning it against that which we feel will sustain it, our hope, that is. That which will continue to, to fulfill us, that will support our ambitions and our aspirations, our desires and our, our dreams. And sometimes, again, I say we're not even aware we move the ladder. But when one thing is not working, the tendency is to look for something other that will work. And perhaps the only time we might even think about uh, about it is a time like now when maybe some of us, in, in light of all this disarray that's going on around us, and perhaps now to us, and uh, we feel the need to, to move our ladder because what it's leaning against is not really sustaining us at the moment. It's not, it's not supporting us as we need it to support us. And the more fragile this wall becomes, the more shaky uh, our ladder gets to be. And we feel the threat of falling. So perhaps it's time to think about moving our ladder again. The psalmist, as we have up here on the board today, up on the screen, said, May your unfailing love rest upon us, O Lord, even as we put our hope in you. He's inviting us to lean our ladder of hope against God. And that seems to be the obvious thing to do, doesn't it, church? I mean, it seems like, you know, that's a no-brainer, preacher. 
It seems like what every Christian should be doing is, is leaning their ladder of hope, if you will, against God. And yet, even a Christian can struggle with this because we live in a world and all that has taught us, that has programmed us, if you will, has conditioned us to build our own walls. The only problem is that we're building these walls with the things of this world. And we're placing our ladder against them. Maybe those walls I'm speaking about, uh, they may be simply a person or persons in your life. And it may be power or prestige or popularity or possessions or, or politics or, or even yourself. But you see, all of these things that, that I'm talking about, all of these particular walls have one thing in common. They do not exist on a firm foundation. Like the man who built his house upon the sand, you know, it looked good, and perhaps it was good for a time until the storm came, and the storm beat against it, and finally it collapsed in the midst of the storm. Am I leaning my letter of hope against something that's not going to last? Because this is not the last storm that's going to come. It's been a pretty big one, hadn't it? A pretty, pretty rough one, the COVID-19, but it won't be the last. What am I leaning my ladder against? Is it able to sustain me? You know what our problem is so often? Even as Christians, I think we find ourselves doing this if we're not careful. We lean our ladders against things and all that are the things of this world, and they are not able to sustain us in, those, in these difficult times. And you know what happens when, the, when, it, when that wall fails? We pick up our ladder and we go and we build or find another wall, and we lean it against that too. And I think we do this, and yet in our minds, knowing we need God, we lean it against the wall of our own choosing, and we ask God to sustain our ladder. You know, hold it steady for me, Lord. This is where I choose to place it, but I ask that you hold it steady for me. And that's not the right way to do it. You and I, we live in this broken world. And the things of this world are not the things in which we are to place our hope. Oh, yes, we need relationships. I understand that relationships are important. They're essential. We need to make a living, so jobs are essential. I understand that. And success is not really a bad thing at all. We're just not to put our trust here. This is not where, what we're to lean our ladder on, not on any one of these in themselves alone. Well, where do we put our ladder? Paul tells us here in Romans chapter 8. But you know something? He goes about it in a very strange way. <laughs> when he tells me where I should place my hope, uh, the first thing he does is, is, is just, you know, just really hit me between the eyes. Look what he says again in verse 20. And now he said, For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it. What is he saying to us here? He's telling us and all that we are living in a world and all that is frustrated. <laughs> We're living in a world that is decaying. We're living in a world that is dying. And everything in it is dying as well. It's a terrible truth, but it's a truth nonetheless. You say, preacher, that's not good news. <laughs> you know, why, why do you start with something? Well, this is, these are Paul's words. But nonetheless, I, I agree with him. And I understand where he's coming from at this point. And uh, we, we live in a, a world that cannot sustain our ladder of hope. No, no matter what it is that we're looking at in this world, you know, it can't do it. But if we're honest and all, we, we don't really want to accept this fact. And you know, we, we don't really want to believe in all that this world is dying or decaying to the extent that we believe somehow, some way, we have the ability to heal it. We have the ability to straighten it out, to make it, a, make it better. And I'm not against attempts to, to improve the world in which we live, but don't get the impression by doing so that the world is going to 
somehow escape decay and death. No more than you will. See, we do a lot of things to improve this body. I, I know looking at me, you probably are thinking I don't do enough. And, uh, but we, we do a lot of things to, to make ourselves healthier, to look healthy, and, and to feel healthy. But we're fighting a losing battle, if we're honest, aren't we? We're not going to overcome the odds. I'm sorry to say. We're not going to do it. And neither is this world. It's not, it was not meant to last forever, and we're not meant to last forever. And it's all because, if we're honest, it's, it, all of this is the result of sin that has entered into this world. And that's its impact and its effect upon everything that's a part of it. You say, well, thank you, preacher, for the good news. <laughs> but there is good news. Paul starts this way because if we're not, if we don't accept that premise, if we think somehow, and you know, all that's not uh, that's not there, and it's not something we have to deal with, and you know, we will we will live in a lie. We will live according to something that is not true. So we've got to understand the problem before we can realize there is a solution, and we're ready and open to the solution. And he tells us in verse twenty-one. He says the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and will be brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. The creation's looking forward to a time in which it will, it will be renewed, if you will, remade and become something brand new all over again. It will no longer have to deal with the the groanings of, and the sufferings that result from decay, destruction, and death. He goes on to say in verses 24 and 25, for in this hope we were saved. This is our hope. And he said, but hope that is seen is no hope at all, for who hopes for what he already has? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, then we wait for it patiently. It's coming. Maybe not as fast as you want it to come, but it's coming. It's coming, and I'll, but you have to be patient. And, and being patient, the connotation here is to be confident as well. Being patient is not just waiting somehow with the idea that the answer or solution is, is still not ready for us. Like this COVID-19, like they're still searching for it, but they haven't found it. There is an answer. When you become a Christian... When you're born again, when, all, when, when you are saved, when your life is put in the hands of God, Paul says you are brought into a bigger and better story. You're brought into a bigger and better story with a much better ending because your hope is now placed against Jesus Christ. It has become an eternal hope. See, everything else is temporal. Everything else is for a time, sometimes a very short time, sometimes for a little bit longer time, but always with the end in mind. But yours now is an eternal hope in Jesus Christ. That's why we don't give up and we wait patiently and confidently because our hope is not resting upon this world but upon God and in him. That's why Paul goes on to say in verses 31 and 32, what then shall we say in response to this? That if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? What is Paul saying? He's saying this. And, and, and there's so many more things I could say about it, but let me just narrow it down for you this morning. He says, when God becomes the focus of my hope. When I lean my ladder of hope against him, and not my job so much, not my income or, or my own ability or my health, but against God himself, I discover that God does not disappoint. Because not only through Jesus Christ did he save me from my sins, but he saved me for a better, a better outcome. He didn't save me just from the past, but for from the present and for the future. 
my ladder is now established to get something that remains constant when everything else is changing around me. When everything else is failing, it holds. Because my God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Paul is saying when God becomes our hope, and we put our hope in him and all, he will not disappoint. Things in this world will disappoint. Even good things, so-called, in this world will fail at some time or another. But you and I can still remain hopeful and all because our hope is in him. We can be hopeful even in our disappointments. We can be hopeful even uh, when we're in debt. We can be hopeful even when we're battling disease. We can be hopeful even, my friends, when we perhaps go through divorce. Even when we face death, we remain hopeful because the ladder of hope is leaning against Jesus Christ. And in him, Paul says here in Romans 8, there is no condemnation. In him, there is no obligation. In him, there is no frustration. In him, there is no separation. The latter remains steady because if God be for us, who can be against us? Listen to these verses again in closing in Romans 8, verses 38 and 39. For I am convinced that word walks hand in hand with true hope. I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the, pre neither the present nor the future, ne ne neither any powers, height, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. That covers it all. That takes everything into account. Things that you know, things that you don't know. Things that are above and things that are below. It takes it all into account. My question then this morning for all who are listening is simply this. Where is your hope? Where is your hope? Right now, where is your hope? What is your ladder of hope leaning against this very moment? If it's not leaning against the Lord, it needs to be moved. It needs to be leaned against him. It doesn't do away with disappointment so much at the moment. It doesn't do away with, with, with your debts or your, or, or, or your disease or, or other problems and, and, and th things that are going on in your life. But it gives you an, another perspective, a whole different perspective. Because those kinds of things that would otherwise tear you down, your ladder of hope will hold you up and you will overcome rather than be overcome. God's people have learned to live in times when everything around them, their circumstances would try to dictate otherwise, but they still learn to live with hope because they know their God is greater than anything else that can come against them. And that's what Paul is saying here. It's time to stop moving the ladder. It's time to put it in place where it needs to be once and for all. To put our hope in God. Who can save us not only from our sins. Who can save us not only for what is out in eternity. And for what is behind us in our past. But for the very moment. Can give us and all the, the strength and the security to be able to press forward even when things are the worst against us right now. I hope you have placed your hope. I hope you have placed your hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, thank you. Thank you for remembering us. Even though it seems like in a world that is decaying and and, and we find even ourselves 
struggling with our own, our own de- decaying and death. You remind us that these things are but temporary. As your whole creation knows where to look, that which is the greatest part of your creation, those that you've made, we need to realize again, this is where we look. We lead the way for all creation to follow, placing our hope in you. And thank you, Lord, for being there to be the difference. To you be the glory and the praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're going to close our service this morning uh, with our offerings. So as you prepare to leave uh, and, uh, and present your offering, I want to share this scripture with you. Uh, there will be offering plates again uh, out here. I think on the table in the foyer, there's, there's one I see before me. Uh, please, again, uh, be mindful of those around you. Uh, you. It's not like we're going to be a huge crowd if we all st- stood together. But at the same time, give each other a little space. Uh, if you want to talk for a little bit, you might want to go outside and stand in the open air and, and, and uh, have your fellowship there. I, I know it's hard to be with you and not be able to fellowship with you. Uh, it's a difficult thing for me, to. Uh, but uh, I thank you for being here. I thank you for allowing me to share God's word with you this morning. Stand with me now, and I will give you uh, the offertory. Uh, we will close then with... Uh, with our final prayer of dedication and dismissal. The reading comes from the book of Acts. Uh, These were the words of Paul as he was sharing with the church. He said, we are to remember the words of the Lord Jesus who said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. May that encourage our hearts to give even as God has blessed us. Father, as we leave here today, we are grateful for having had the opportunity to be with you, to be with those others who love you and are able to be with us today, but to be with all of our our, our church family near and far, uh, those uh, that are connected together with us in Jesus Christ, wherever they might be. We pray your blessing upon the gifts that we leave before you as a, expression of, a further expression of our worship and our love for you. Please bless these gifts and those that will use them. Give them wisdom to be to use them, Father, in a way that will further your kingdom for your glory and the good of all. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed.